What is up everybody? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Sarth and today was the release of the pre-patch of Shadowlands which means Nax is only right around the corner for classic World of Warcraft. With this ultimate raid coming out in WoW, I wanted to share with you guys a loot prio guide as well as a phase 6 bis list for all rogues in World of Warcraft Classic. Now, a lot of times people don't know exactly what the items they should be going after are, especially first, and the people who actually are well informed will be able to target, or if you have loot prio sheets, or if you have DKP, save up for these big items that make the most difference. And so today we're going to go over exactly what you need to do for both daggers and swords, also touching on things like being a human, as well as things like trinket swaps. So we're going to dive into everything. And recently I have been making a lot of content on these world speedrun records, and I will be covering a lot more of that later this week or next week as all of the guilds finish their last DMF runs. But I do, of course, love my rogue content, so if you like the video or want me to cover anything or have any questions, make sure to like and subscribe to keep up with more things and let me know in the comments. Let's get right into it. Okay, so the first thing you want to know is that there is a slight variation potentially versus having BIS gear with full world buffs and having no world buffs. We generally plan to have all of our world buffs, but a lot of the times we do lose world buffs throughout the raid, and the only reasoning there is slight differentials is because of crit cap and things with hit. So with world buffs, you will have slightly different gear, which is the ideal BIS gear, which is what I'm going to cover today. The only real changes, and I'll mention them right now, is mostly that you will swap basically on your DFT. You will usually also swap on your striker's mark and as well, bone scythe bracers. You can swap those out for your Karaji execution bracers for the hit and the Shroud of Dominion, you can swap that out for your Cloak of Concentrated Hatred for the hit. So past that, the real thing we are looking at for this raid, your BIS gear pretty much looks the exact same for daggers and swords, and that is mostly wearing full Bone Scythe gear. I say this because it's not full Bone Scythe gear. You do not swap out your Belt of Never Ending Agony for the Bone Scythe belt, the four piece set bonus from the bone scythe set is actually insane. It is so, so good. So we do want to be getting our four piece set bonus pretty quickly. So these set bonuses go as follows. The two piece set bonus gives your normal weapon swings a chance to heal you, which is pretty much the same thing as we saw with our blood fang gear. And this is a little more mitigation, which can actually be very useful, especially in a speed run situation. But the four piece will give your main abilities a chance for you to regain energy and having more energy is always incredible. We are going to see some people running the four piece set bonus along with a four piece dark mantle for just an incredible energy build, but that will still be out DPS pretty significantly almost every single time by this full bis set that I'm going to go over with you guys. Then outside of your bone scythe gear for your bis lists, and it's really good that that makes it so simple that you're pretty much using so much bone scythe gear. You are still using Prester's Talisman of Connivory from BWL. So if you didn't prio this or if you don't have this yet, this is an item that you will use until the end of the game. So make sure that you do get yourself a Prester's. And then you are going to get the Shroud of Dominion for your cloak which is an upgrade from the Cloak of Concentrated Hatred or the Cloak of the Fallen God, whichever one you are specifically using. Next up, we're going to the rings. And this, oh my gosh, guys, this is the item that I, you really, really want to look out for. The Band of Unnatural Forces. One crit, one hit, 52 attack power on a ring. This ring is so much stronger than any other ring in the entire game for rogues, but it's also insane for warriors and it's also insane for hunters. So you are gonna have to fight people for this loot prio. And in the next section, I will go over the loot prio and exactly how much of a DPS increase every single item is. But this is the sleeper item that most people aren't looking at because everyone's eyes 
are on one item in this entire raid, and that is the Kiss of the Spider. Now, we did see a lot of videos either talking about how insane Jom Kabar is or how Jom Kabar isn't something you need to go after specifically. And that was for phase five. And the reasoning there was because, yes, outside of weapons, actually the daggers, but even if you're swords, Jom Kabar is the biggest upgrade in the entire instance of AQ, even above Earthstrike. If you had Earthstrike, it's still such an insane upgrade. But if you had to prio that first, then you might lose prio on this item right here, which is the biggest DPS upgrade from any trinket in the entire game. And this is your Biss Trinket, 100 million percent, the Kiss of the Spider. Now this again gives you one crit, one hit, and then increases your attack speed for 15 seconds by 20%. This is huge, and it's actually only on a two minute CD, so this is going to let you be able to dumpster things. The next best trinket is technically Slayer's Crest, but against an undead target, you could use the Mark of the Champion, which I just pulled up right now, gives you 150 attack power at all times. It's just a base attack power thing, which actually ends up being almost the same DPS increase as using Slayer's Crest. So against an undead target, guys, you do want to look out for using Mark of the Champion because it's almost exactly as good as Slayer's Crest. Slayer's Crest, though, is still technically better, and I'll get into that, but Kiss of the Spider is your big trinket prio. This is what you're looking out for in the entire raid outside of weapons, Kiss of the Spider. And then we, of course, move on to weapons. The non-obvious one is the ranged weapon, which is the first time we finally replace our striker's mark from phase one, and that is Nerubian Slave Maker, the crossbow that gives you 24 attack power and one crit. Now, it is nice to finally replace an item that you potentially have had the entirety of this game, but this DPS increase, as I will get into it a little bit later, is not that massive. The big thing are the weapons. Naxxramas has insane weapons that actually, even if you're not going for the Biss weapons, you are getting huge DPS increases. So looking at just the Biss weapons are, of course, Gressel, Dawn of Rune, the main hand off of KT, and the Hungering Cold for your offhand if you are not a human, the offhand also off of KT. But if you are a human, you will look at Iblis, the Blade of the Fallen Seraph, as your offhand instead of the Hungering Cold. And then if you're daggers, the only dagger you're really looking at, if you have Death Sting, is King's Fall. This is the big item that you actually will now switch your Death Sting out of your main hand into your offhand, so you get a DPS increase of both of these. To go into these DPS increases exactly, let me just break out the spreadsheet for you guys. So for what we're using right now, the only increase from your main hand weapon as a sword rogue is going to be Gressel, and that is going to be a pretty massive DPS increase, but for your offhand, if you're still using Maladath, or even if you have Thunder Fury, the Hungering Cold is the big increase, but also Iblis is a still pretty massive increase in your offhand against Maladath. So if you are a sword rogue and you don't think you're going to get prio on Hungering Cold because you're focused on getting Gressel, Iblis this is a huge, huge, huge offhand and a very large DPS increase, actually almost as big as anything else in there. You will see in a minute that it's not as good as getting this new trinket, but almost anything else in here, this is such a large DPS increase just on your offhand. So don't actually dismiss getting Iblis for your offhand if you are non-human, because you can do that and just focus on getting Gressel and using your prio there instead of going after Hungering Cold. And if you are a human, as we move over, Gressil again is still your Biss main hand weapon, but your best offhand from here is Iblis, which is slightly better than Hungering Cold. Hungering Cold is still actually really good, but your warriors are probably going to take it. Iblis is slightly better. Then if we look at daggers, daggers actually where there is a lot more choices. If you don't have Death Sting yet, in your main hand, instead of using two Pugios, you could actually use Harbinger of Doom or Myxenus Fang. Myxenus Fang is significantly larger of a DPS increase than Harbinger of Doom, but neither of them are anywhere near as big of a DPS increase as King's Fall. But here's the question. 
even if you don't have Death Sting, then you can go after either of these, Harbinger of Doom first, because it will be then your next best offhand over King's Fall in your main hand. So then when you get King's Fall in your main hand, just move the Harbinger to your offhand. So a really good loot prio if you don't have Death Sting would be to get the Harbinger, use it in your main hand until you get King's Fall, and then use King's Fall in your main hand and Harbinger in your offhand. And then we also have Myaxinus Fang being an increase from Pugio in your offhand as well. So make sure that you don't dismiss the off meta items here. It's really the weapons throughout Nax are pretty insane. There's also a misplaced servo arm. It's, it's not something to be overlooked. You could go mace spec and beat everybody. And then also there are the claw, the fist weapons. So guys, pretty much any weapon from Nax is gonna be an increase for you. So make sure that you are pretty much prioritizing any weapon. But if you can go after these bis weapons, the amount of an upgrade is actually insane. And so I swapped down, down here to the phase six guide where I have exactly how much of a DPS increase every single one of these items is in a one minute fight. And so with this spreadsheet, which will be linked in the description, you can see exactly how much of a DPS increase each one of these items is, but then we can actually just go to the classicwowbuilds.com, which I just discovered I think is made by Zatar. So shout out to the boy, dude. What a legend. Look, created by Zatar. What an absolute legend. And now we will go over your exact gear prio list that you want to go over. Now, the first thing you want to prio, as always, is going to be the weapons. The hard part about prioritizing these weapons is that everybody's going for them even if you're not human if you are a non-human you are trying to get this gressel and even your warriors are trying to get your gressel because they also want to just use hungry and cold with gressel and ghost swords everyone is looking for this so prioritizing weapons first may be a little bit of a struggle and you can as i mentioned earlier prioritize some of the off meta weapons and you will have massive dps increases it's just not going to be that crazy meta dps increase as we look at the numbers though with gressel itself is a 58 dps increase and for non-humans the hungering cold is a 40 dps increase and then for humans, you are going to get a 41 DPS increase from Iblis in your offhand. Then as a dagger rogue, if you are swapping your death sting to the offhand as you get King's Fall, it's going to be a 46 DPS increase. So these are your biggest increases. These are your first priority items. But again, be aware, all of your warriors are going after these items and you might have to lose out to your tanks, especially especially on Hungering Cold, which is pretty much going to be tank prio first for the most part so that they can use that along with their Thunder Fury. So just be aware of that, guys. But then the next biggest DPS increases are those fatty trinkets that I was mentioning earlier. And the main one, the Kiss of the Spider, is a 27 to 31 DPS increase. And the reasoning for this range is because it changes slightly for daggers and swords. So this is your huge Bis trinket. But behind that is going to be Slayer's Crest. 64 attack power and plus 260 attack power, another two minute CD. On use trinkets are amazing. We can use two of them on a lot of fights, but also swapping throughout them. Trinket swapping in general is really the meta right now, especially for AQ and Nax speedruns or trying to min max on your overall DPS throughout the entire raid. Pretty much every single fight, you will now be able to swap trinkets. You can have Kiss of the Spider, you can have Slayer's Crest, you can have Jom Gabar, you can have Earth Strike, you can have Brenatakis. All of these trinkets are pretty much just going in and out in rotation right as they're off of cooldown as much as you can. On the next tab, we're going to go see your biggest DPS upgrades, and this is where you're going to see the real loot prio you want to go for. The nice thing is that you actually only have to focus on one thing for the most part outside of your tier gear, which as we've all seen, tier gear is actually decently easy to get. 
although it's decently expensive and I will break down exactly what the requirements are to get the tier gear right at the end of the video so stay tuned for that and I'll link something in the description for that as well but the next biggest increases are going to be like I mentioned the mark of the champion if you are fighting an undead target is almost as good as slayer's crest but the one you really want to look out the sleeper is band of unnatural forces i'm sure we're going to see some warrior guides talking about how insane this is so try to get your prio on this early this is the item you really really want outside of your tier gear this is it the weapons the trinket and this ring that is your loot prio you've done it next is the tier gear of course but that's really the big ones so for your tier gear, you have the bone scythe leg plates, which are about a 10 to 12 DPS increase. So the legs are first, then the helm, and then the shoulders. You want to go after the legs, the helm, and the shoulders. The big question or the big little caveat here is that as swords, the increase of DPS from having five out of five tier 2.5 is so massive that you actually have to combine some of these items so that they pass up 16.3 DPS before you want to break your tier 2.5. So no one piece of the bone scythe set is going to allow you to break your tier 2.5. You need to increase your DPS by above 16.3, which means two of these items would work. Any two from this tab of the biggest DPS increases will work together. If you get any of these smaller pieces, you are probably not breaking your tier 2.5 just yet. And so the next best pieces in order are the boots, the gloves, and the bone scythe ring. Now the ring is an easy piece because you can upgrade that as well as you get the other ring and you don't have to break your tier 2.5 and then anything even no matter what any of the pieces are if you can set up the four piece set bonus that is when you break your tier 2.5 so any of the four pieces even if it doesn't add up to that dps threshold that i mentioned which is 16.3 again and you will see as the items go down, it is significantly less DPS increases. The boots are a seven to eight DPS increase and the gloves are a seven to a seven and a half DPS increase. But your least highest priority items inside of this entire dungeon are going to be the bracers, which are about a four to five DPS increase. The slave maker, which we probably will see a lot of people prioritize but they don't realize that it's such a slim DPS increase, three to four DPS, the Shroud of Dominion, which is about three DPS increase, and the chest. Bone Scythe Breastplate is the smallest upgrade of all of the Bone Scythe pieces that we are swapping onto. Significantly, it is only about a one DPS increase, and the big hit here is the stats, because stats actually scale and so it is incredible with two percent crit one hit and 80 attack power if you don't have world buffs but with world buffs your stats are scaling so well that you actually get such a small dps increase from this breastplate that it is probably the last item that you need to be going after to complete your eight set bonus so don't really worry about that now the last thing I want to mention is of course that the Rogue Tier 3 set is expensive to make guys. You can start getting all of your materials for it right now, but this is a spreadsheet made by my boy Spot who actually helped me revamp my entire Discord channel. So huge shout out to Spot and Arrow who introduced me to you. So the total requirements for all of the Bone Scythe pieces are 106 worn leather scraps, which you will get from the raid itself, so you don't have to worry about that. But you need 42 cured rugged hides. You also need five Arcanet bars. You need five Nexus crystals and 275 gold. The only thing that really you can subtract from this is everything that goes towards the Bone Scythe Waste Guard so that you can get your entire Bone Scythe set. And that's pretty much it, guys. That is your entire phase six this list going over every single item you need to be focused on as well as 
what your loot prio should be as a rogue. Now, again, all of these resources are going to be in my Discord channel, but also in the description. And if you have any questions, make sure to hit me up in either Discord or on Twitch. I do stream every weekday at 5 p.m. PST and most Saturdays and starting to be more Sundays. So just look at the Discord channel if you wanna know when I'm gonna go live. Of course, if you like this video and want to see more Phase 6 content, make sure to hit that like and subscribe button. I'm going to be covering a lot of things. Thanks for being here, guys, and good luck out there. I'll catch you guys all on the next one.